All right, I want to welcome everyone to our live Saturday morning presentation. We've got a lot of material that we want to cover today. Uh, the goal of today's presentation is to give you a good overview of what a social media campaign could look like, and then also to be able to help you uh, use this presentation today because we are recording it, as well as the PDF that I'm showing you will be made available to you in the Tuesday newsletter. Uh, but this way, if people want to utilize a social media campaign, it'll give you a template for the process to go through. And as you can see, I have an image up here, which kind of gives you an overview where your social media campaign is basically a Monday through Friday, <clears throat> excuse me, a Monday through Friday campaign where you're posting at least twice a day. That means you're gonna do a minimum of 10 posts per week. And you use the weekends to kind of lay out your content. And I'll explain how this all works together in, in just a little bit. But as I go through, again, the purpose of today's presentation is give you a framework on how to implement a social media campaign. And we're gonna cover the following three main areas, branding message, your overall strategy, and a one week outline of content as an example. And before I get started here, I really want to highlight two things. First off, I want to highlight the presentation that Judy Feldhausen did on how to leverage LinkedIn. It was a fantastic presentation, one of the best Saturday presentations we've ever had. And <clears throat> two things, I would highly recommend that you watch her presentation because what I'm gonna show you today can also be done on LinkedIn. And in Judy's presentation, she gives you specific step-by-step -step methods to be able to leverage LinkedIn in a highly successful way. In fact, uh, Judy has been able to do that uh, for herself personally. And then the other thing is, is that if you're going to do a Facebook program, you know, Facebook continues and will continue to change how posts are viewed by people. And if you're not familiar with Facebook or you're not familiar with these changes, then I certainly recommend that you go to a website called Udemy and you learn how to implement a Facebook or Instagram social media campaign. Uh, as you can see on this document that I'm using, this PDF, these images, like if you click on adding LinkedIn, if you click on that image, it will actually take you to the recorded Saturday presentation that Judy did at how to leverage LinkedIn. And if you click on the image for Udemy, that will take you directly to their website. And one of the things that I did before in preparing for today's presentation is if you're not familiar with how to do something, but you wanna make that part of your marketing strategy, a great place to learn how is to go to a website called Udemy and then you can put into their search term what you're looking for. So what I put in the search term is building likes on Facebook. And as you can see, there were, were 10,000 results. People who put together courses that you can purchase from this company and be able to learn how to implement that marketing strategy. Now, I'm not gonna go through all 10,000 results, but they usually give you in the, you know, they, they list them based upon likes and importance in terms of relativity and in, in, in the people who they've either had courses from or the amount of people who are taking their courses. And so I have six of them up here. Some of these are not going to apply, like how to create a Facebook page and crowd it with likes. Now that might be applicable, but if you look at the date for this program, this was done a couple years ago. So the information is not going to be currently relevant to 2020. Now the one that I circled is from a course, from a company that I've used before, Course Envy. They make, they do excellent presentations. They're excellent in terms of helping to communicate information and teach you how to do things. And so I circled their, their course here, Facebook Ads and Facebook Marketing Mastery 2020. So this course would be current to the current environment on Facebook in terms of how posts are viewed and, and the best recommendations that they would have to increase your viewership. Now, most of these courses, never you never buy at list price. They're always on sale. 
And as you can see, they run anywhere from $14 to this course runs $20. $20 to have uh, basically two and, or 12 and a half hours of material teaching you how to master Facebook from a marketing standpoint. It's well worth your investment of 20 bucks to learn how to do this. Another one that I also circled down here was for $16, supercharge your Facebook marketing and Facebook ads in 2020. Now, I've never used them before, but they do have a large number of people who've taken their course and they do have a very good rating. Uh, so those would be two, and, and then you can always click on these. Doesn't mean that you have to buy them, but you can click on them. You can read through what their, um, their coursework is going to be, the areas that they're gonna cover, so you can make sure that whatever course you're gonna take is gonna help you advance your marketing strategy. Now, I'm gonna start with overall strategy first before we get into our branding message because you need to understand the process that I'm going to communicate to you on how you can both increase your likes as well as make your postings on Facebook relevant to your message. And so the strategy is basically a twofold strategy. The first one is to go on the Facebook and find three to five major Facebook sites that resonate with your marketing strategy. So one of the things that you've got to decide is what is going to be your marketing strategy. You want to define that because when you go to Facebook and you put that search term in, you want to find large Web, large, large sites on Facebook that have a large amount of population that like them so that you can get, your, you, get you and your name in front of a large population base. And so what I did in the search term bar for Facebook is I put in the search term uh, health and wellness groups. And that gave me a large number of recommendations from Facebook and all I did was I began to scroll down. I would look at the number of likes that they have and I would look at what their, uh, their tagline is to see what they're actually about and then I would click on them. And once I clicked on the, the, the name, it would take me to the Facebook landing page for them and then I would begin to scroll their news feed and look at the kinds of articles that they're posting the amount of engagement that they're getting. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times comments are now hidden where you can't actually see their comments except by clicking on comics, comments, whereas before you could see the comments and they've changed that aspect. But you can click on comments, see the kind of comments that are being posted, but you're looking for engagement, wanting to see how much of what they do post people actually start are, are looking at. And in this process, I found three that I liked and, and I like them, so now I can go to them and I can, right. I can post on them. Let me go in here and uh, mute someone. And then the process is, on a daily basis, you wanna go to those pages and you want to look at their posts and then you wanna make useful comments on their posts. That doesn't mean that you have to comment on every post. For example, I went to the health site that I liked and they had, a, an article highlighting the benefits of lemon water. Well, I personally don't care for lemon water, but what they're talking about are the health benefits of lemon water. So what I posted, I posted that I prefer to add liquid chlorophyll to my water to achieve health benefits. So it's things like that that you can look at. Or there was another one that had posted on an article uh, about using uh, alkaline water. Well, you know, when, you, when I looked into their post, what they were trying to do is sell their alkaline water machine. And although I didn't do a, a comment to that, that would have been another one that you could have posted to and say, you know, uh, I understand you, you, the body wanting to be alkaline from a, from a health standpoint, but a better way about going, a, but a better way of doing this is not to drink highly alkaline water, but things like liquid chlorophyll or other things that can be added to the water to help achieve the same process. You know, there, so there's so many different things that you could do. And, and the whole purpose of what you're doing is to begin to have regular engagement on these authority pages 
so that you can create awareness of who you are. And then you want to make sure that your posts are positive and that they actually provide helpful information. And when you begin to do that, others are going to begin to see you as a positive person in their community that brings good information and insights. You are basically branding yourself as a trusted and reliable commentator. And as you do that, people in the community are going to begin, especially ones that actually look at those pages, are going to, are going to see you and see you as a trusted, reliable commentator, and they're going to click on your name, and it's going to take them then to your Facebook page. Now, this process does require time, and it requires consistency. Just like every marketing strategy that you're going to implement to build your synergy business requires time and consistency. You cannot expect to become an expert in one week. You cannot expect people to see you as an expert in one week. They will see you this over time and your consistency. Consistency is key to any marketing strategy to help you grow your synergy business. And then when they do click on your name, if you've been applying the second part of the strategy so that when they go to your Facebook page, they're going to see posts and they're going to see how you engage with your community. If they see that your posts are good and that your engagement with your community is good, then you're going to be able to increase your probability that they're going to like your page to follow you because they want to get your content, which then brings us again to the second strategy, which is consistently posting to your Facebook page that brands you as a trusted advisor. You've gone from a trusted and reliable commentator to a trusted advisor. And then here's where this overall strategy begins to kick in that you've been doing Monday through Friday, posting twice a day on your Facebook page. So you've got a minimum of 10 posts per week, which means that you've got a minimum of 40 posts per month, which means that you've got in the course of a year's time, 520 posts to your Facebook page. Again, this is a strategy you have to continue to implement the strategy over time. And what we're going to help you understand today is how to leverage your time effectively so that you can then effectively leverage this strategy or you can apply the strategy that I'm going to show you. You could also do this on LinkedIn. I am not familiar with Instagram, so again, you know, I can't comment with regards to how well this strategy works on Instagram. Uh, but again, you could take coursework from Udemy and find an excellent course will help you leverage Instagram if that's the route that you want to go down. Now, when you begin to post on your Facebook page, you want to begin to make sure that you have a branding message. Now, you can choose whatever you want for a branding message. I'm going to show you what I do. I use the Million Lives Project as my branding message. And here's a statement. And this branding message needs to be stated in some form at the beginning of every week of your campaign. Because again, you're branding yourself. And in this case, I want to brand myself to a larger entity called the Million Lives Project. So I have basically, hi everyone, I want to let you know that I've decided to become a part of the Million Lives Project. Their goal is to help a million people or more understand how to use natural methods to address many of the health challenges facing our community. I've benefited from this information and I'd like to share it with you. Or you can make it more specific to a particular health concern like high blood pressure. But if you keep it general, like I've tried to do in the statement above, you're going to have greater flexibility in sharing information. You know, if you're going to just stay to high blood pressure, it's going to be difficult over 52 weeks to find new and different and relative, re relevant information on high blood pressure that you haven't most already said, you know, multiple times. But if you're doing it from a general standpoint, then there's other areas that you can go into that would fit well into the Synergy products. Uh, it won't be next week because 
Bob and Judy will be doing a leadership development uh, program next Saturday. But on the first Saturday of September, I've been working on redesigning the Our Synergy Family website, and I'm going to begin to show you individual pages that have been designed for in individual marketing strategies. And so within this context of what I'm showing you here today, if you keep your message general with a mission statement, you know, that could be like what David does. David has branded himself in the Hispanic Health Initiative, or some of the uh, people who are on today's presentation up in the Caribbean Islands have used the Caribbean Islands Health Initiative, or the Black Health Initiative. Maybe you want to help the people within your community, your African American, you're black, you want to help people in your community improve their health. And so there's things. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Bob. I'm scheduled to do the immune boost next Saturday. Thanks for reminding me. So it'll be, their presentation will be the last Saturday of August. I'll be doing the immune boost presentation next Saturday, but, what, but the first Saturday in September will be when I show you these marketing pages, individual marketing pages for ways that you can grow your synergy business. Now, coming back to this whole process, I, again, you can adapt this statement to your voice and then a variation of that each week is, hey everyone, again, I'm part of the Million Lives Project. Our goal is to help a million people or more understand how to use natural methods to address many of the health challenges facing our community. And this week, I'm going to focus on whatever it might be, high blood pressure, diabetic complications, uh, cognitive function, athletic performance, or you might wanna change it up. I'm gonna focus on the immune system. I'm gonna focus on cholesterol concerns. And, and then your material that you prepare for that week is all going to focus on that particular area of topic. That way you can take five days to develop that area of topic to create interest leading to hopefully an outcome that either gets people to want to DM you, direct message you for more information or want to understand is there a product that can help me achieve the things that you're talking about. Now, here's what not to do. All right, I like this, I'm gonna read it just because uh, every time I read it, it reminds me of why I don't spend time on Facebook. I am trying to make friends outside of Facebook by applying the same principles. Therefore, every day I walk down the street and tell passer buyers what I have eaten, how I feel at the moment, what I have done the night before, what I will do later and with whom. I give them pictures of my family, my dog and me gardening, taking things apart in the garage, watering the lawn, standing in front of landmarks, driving around town, having lunch, and doing what anybody and everybody does every day. I'm also listening to their conversations, giving them a big thumbs up and tell them I like them. And it works just like Facebook. I already have four people following me, two police officers, a private investigator, and a psychiatrist. So that's not what we want to do on your Facebook posting. Certainly if you wanna share something, a family event, something like that in the context of what I'm showing you, please feel free to do that. But you don't wanna make that the type of posting that you do all the time because people are not going to want to follow you. Sorry, you may think that you have an interesting life and I'm sure it is, but again, what we're trying to do is help you build your synergy business. So. I'm gonna briefly go through this information. You're, you'll have access to this PDF, but the key to the best marketing strategy that you can develop is what we call storytelling. Storytelling is going to help you create interest and going to help you to move your narrative along where people will want to become part of what you're doing. So as they say, you've heard it many times if you've been in network marketing, facts tell, stories sell. This is an area that I have had to learn how to change. I used to tell a lot of facts, but I've learned how to 
share stories. And I've learned how to put the information that I'm sharing in the context of a story or what I call a narrative. People buy outcomes. What's the before and after? What's the pain or problem? And how have you made their life better? So great marketing articulates this move from the before state to the desired after state. You're going to see some of this when I show you a week's worth of posts for a campaign that I would run on Facebook. Now, paint a vision. Write copy about how customers will feel, how their average day will change, how their status will elevate. You know, again, what, is, what does that look like in relationship to the context of maybe someone who's on statin drugs? You can talk about people that you know that are on statin drugs and some of the side effects that they're feeling. How would it be if you didn't have those things, but at the same time could use a natural method that would give you equal to maybe even better outcome without all those different side effects? Uh, again, you know, that's a process of learning how to tell a story. Use questions, write copy that starts with a question. How would your day change if you didn't have to take your high blood pressure medication? Then share a story that answers the, this question. And then, You've got different types of storylines that you can use, loss and redemption, us versus them, before and after, an amazing discovery, secret telling, third person testimonials. Uh, again, there's a lot of different things that you can use. And again, when you, if you're gonna use a third person testimonial, just be careful that you tie the third person testimonial to nitric oxide therapy, not to ProArch 9 Plus. Or if you use uh, a third-person testimonial with regards to maybe how metabolic LDL helped them with their cholesterol, again, you tie it to bergamot fruit extract as opposed to metabolic LDL. That way, you can make sure that the testimonial is tied to science and not a particular product. That way, we don't get yourself or Synergy Worldwide into any kind of issues. And then there's some good do's and don'ts that you want to be aware of. Don't spam. Don't tag people who are not in your photos. I mean, I get tagged and it's like, okay, why did I get tagged on this? I'm not even in the photo. Be consistently pitching. You know, don't be, you know, don't be that. Just if, if you don't like what people do on Facebook, then don't repeat what people do on Facebook that you don't like. But you do want to post relevant images. You want to be authentic. You want to provide value. You know, those are the two key aspects that people are going to want to follow you is if you're authentic and you're providing value. Share experiences. Team photos, events, those are all great. You know, it's just that if they're the only thing that you post, then again, people are not going to feel like it's relevant to them. If you get personal, if you share some anger, make sure that you do it not from a political standpoint. We, we live in politics to such a point today that even if you look on Facebook, it is a dividing aspect. So leave that out. You know, if you've got something that you don't like about the government or about the current administration or about the potential administration that might come in in November, again, leave it off of leave it off of your Facebook page. I'm, I'm telling you, all you're gonna do is create a firestorm that's not worth having to try and put out and it's not going to advance your synergy business in any shape or form. Now, talk about your mission. So I'm gonna give you a sampling of a week of Facebook posting to show you kind of how this looks like and then this also can become a template. Doesn't mean that you say the same words, but it does give you a template to make it a little, maybe easier to find information and adapt it. So I'm gonna give you five days, two posts per day, and here we go. This is day one, post one. Hi, and, I'm, I'm, and this is the image that I would be using. Uh, some of these posts you will not see images because they have a URL address attached to it. And the nice thing that Facebook does is if you put a URL 
Im uh, a URL into the post, it will grab an image that's associated with that URL. So you don't necessarily have to have images for everything that you do. In this case, I want to use this image, the Million Lives Project. Hi, everyone. I wanted to share some information this week from the Million Lives Project. Their goal is to help a million people or more understand how to use natural methods to address a variety of health issues. This week, I'm going to post information about high blood pressure. If you find this information helpful, then please DM me and please share this information with others. All right, I'm all, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm beginning to set myself up on day one, Monday, and here's my second post. Do you know what your blood pressure reading is? I started off with a question. No, I, I don't. Yes, I do. You know, it's estimated that it's estimated that about one third of all adults have high blood pressure, a blood pressure reading over 140 over 90. If you don't know what your blood pressure reading is, then go to your doctor or a local clinic and get it get it taken. Why? Because the number one cause of stroke of a stroke or heart attack is high blood pressure. And it is the number one diabetic complication. Tomorrow, I'm going to share two stories, one with a bad outcome and one with a good outcome. So what have I done on this one here? I've used the art of asking a question to plant in the mind where they have to answer that question. No, I don't have I don't know what my blood pressure is, or I do know what my blood pressure is. Oh, great. I'm under 140 over 90. I don't have high blood pressure. I feel better. Or I don't know what my blood pressure is. You mean one third of all adults have high blood pressure? Maybe I better go find out what it is because it is the number one cause of stroke or heart attack. And I'm diabetic. I bet you I most likely have high blood pressure. I guess I should get this taken care of. And then what I do is I plant a seed at the end of a story I'm going to share tomorrow. Not today, but tomorrow. So here's day two. My first post. This is my dad, Eugene M. Hammer, celebrating his 67th birthday. Unfortunately, he died of a heart attack just one month prior to his 68th birthday. My dad had high blood pressure. He was on medication for it, yet he still died from cardiovascular disease. Could it have been prevented? Maybe if I knew then what I know today about nitric oxide therapy, the outcome might have been different for my dad. Thankfully, I have a positive story about high blood pressure and nitric oxide therapy. I'll share this with you later today. And so my second post is this one. This is my wife, Sherry. Her blood pressure is normal, but it wasn't always like that. About 11 years ago, her blood pressure was 160 over 90. Then she, uh, then she applied nitric oxide therapy, took her blood pressure down to 112 over 68. It has been at this level ever since. No need for medications and certainly has reduced her risk for a heart attack or stroke. Now, if you think this is voodoo science, then you might want to check out the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine, awarded to the three American researchers who discovered how the lining of your cardiovascular system converts the amino acid L-arginine into nitric oxide, the master signaling molecule of your entire cardiovascular system. More on this tomorrow. So what I've done on day two is I've given a bad outcome and a good outcome, and I've made it personal. And I've tried to write it in a narrative, a story. And I'm setting people up for wanting more information. That's going to come tomorrow. Here's day three, post one. Again, this is the image that I would use. Yesterday, I mentioned that nitric oxide therapy is Nobel Prize winning information. Here are the three American researchers who discovered this miracle molecule for cardiovascular health. Of all the books written in this area, the best one is No More Heart Disease by Dr. Louis J. Ignaro. How effective is nitric oxide? Well, on his cover, he makes the following statement. How nitric oxide can prevent, even reverse, heart disease and strokes. I know my wife and I have benefited from nitric oxide therapy. It is also why I think my dad would have benefited. But at the time of his death, none of this information was known. 
Later today, I'll share an article on how nitric oxide helps heart medications work more effectively. Work more effectively. Now, again, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to tie in what I shared the day before with relevant information today. Maybe someone didn't see my post from before. What's this about Dan's wife? What's this about his dad? Maybe I'll go, all they have to do is just scroll down the time stream and they can find those posts. They can read those posts. It just begins again to make the information that you're sharing relevant and, and, and again, uh, authentic to the voice that you're trying to share. So here is post number two for this day, because again, I told people I'm gonna share something of, uh, in regards to this. So here's post number two. Thanks to the Million Lives Project, I've been able to educate myself in the area of nitric oxide therapy. They helped me discover the following article. Heart disease severity may depend on nitric oxide levels. Study finds nitric oxide may also determine drug efficacy. Here's the summary. The most common heart medications may get an assist from nitric oxide circulating in the body, according to a new study. Researchers showed that nitric oxide may help commonly used heart drugs maximize their benefits while improving heart function. In turn, the study found nitric oxide deficiencies could underlie heart failure while tilting drug effects towards more harmful pathways and side effects. This was published in 2018 and helps us understand how nitric oxide can be beneficial even for those on heart medications. Here's the link to the study. And again, I provide the link so if a person wants to go and get more information, they can. Plus, this will put an image on my post. Day number four, post one. A lot of you have been asking me, what is nitric oxide therapy? Even if they haven't asked you, you can still do the same thing. What is nitric oxide therapy? Well, in a nutshell, it's using nitric oxide to improve blood flow. Improved blood flow then delivers more oxygen and nutrients while helping to remove waste products. This means your cells, tissues, and organ systems can all function better. If you would like even more information on what nitric oxide is and how it can benefit your body, then watch this excellent video titled, What is Nitric Oxide Therapy? And again, there's the link to it. And when you put the link in your post, there'll be an image for that video. So you'll have an image with your post and images always cause eye attraction. Post number two for the fourth day. I Googled benefits of nitric oxide and came across a great article that listed the top five benefits of nitric oxide. Here they are. Help treat erectile dysfunction may decrease muscle soreness, lower blood pressure, boost exercise performance, may help manage type two diabetes. The article goes into detail on each of these benefits. Here is the link to the article titled, Five Ways Nitric Oxide Supplements Boost Your Health and Performance. There's the link to the article. There'll be an image. Again, what have I done? I've now linked my process to nitric oxide supplements. And then here's day number five, post one. This week we've been talking about nitric oxide therapy and how it can help address high blood pressure. Yesterday I gave you a link to an article that highlighted the top five benefits of nitric oxide supplements. And one of those benefits was lowering blood pressure. I did a search on YouTube and came across the following video titled, How Nitric Oxide Therapy Addresses High Blood Pressure. It's easy to understand and very informative. I highly recommend watching it if you or a loved one has high blood pressure. Here's the link. And again, the link will create an image of that video, and that's the non-branded video that we've done for our Synergy family that you have access to, non-branded at the back end, that again, helps people understand how nitric oxide therapy can address high blood pressure. And then part two, or post two, I should say, for the last day. I've been getting questions about which supplements might be good for helping to improve nitric oxide levels. And while there are hundreds of products in the market, my wife and I use a specific brand. It's ProArch9 Plus from Synergy Worldwide. 
It's recognized by the medical community. It is listed in the physician's desk reference as the highest quality LRH9 supplement in the world. It is clinically proven in this area. Plus they offer 120 day money back guarantee on their product. This way you can put it to the test and if you don't enjoy the benefits you were hoping for, then you can return the product to Synergy Worldwide for a full refund on the cost of the product. Here's an excellent video to help you understand not by why it is so effective. And again, there's the YouTube. And again, it'll provide an image. Once you have that URL in your Facebook post, it'll provide an image for that video. So again, you'll have an image that will attract people. And that's one of the videos that we've done for our Synergy family on why ProH9 Plus. Why is that our product of choice? Now, that's a week of posts. And let me go through some additional comments. As I said at the beginning, as I've said other times, you need to commit time and consistency to this process. So you need to commit about an hour a day and use your weekend to craft your 10 messages. Do your research and craft your messages on the weekend. Maybe it means you get up a little bit earlier on Saturday morning before the rest of the family is awake. Or maybe you, you know, uh, it's hard to watch baseball. It doesn't look like there'll be much college football come, you know, the fall. So what you used to spend watching sporting events, you know, take the two hours, three hours that you spent on the weekend watching a sporting event and use it to craft your message. You know, decide what your theme's going to be for the week and then begin to do your research. Now, two great places where you can find articles, ideas, and videos are on my blog on the danhammerhealth.com. Just click on that link, it'll take you right to my blog. I don't know how many blog articles I have there, but there are a ton of them. And then another great source is what Bob Wishmeyer has done with the Global Health Makeover. And he makes it even easier for you to find the articles. Uh, you know, when you go on the homepage, you can look on the right-hand column and, you know, he, he has a listing there of all the different uh, topics. So you could click on a topic that you want to uh, look at, you know, as your theme for the week. And then you can see all the different articles that are associated with that topic. Lay out your weekly themes for the month. All right. Decide if there's if there's four month or four weeks in the month or five weeks. Get your four or five themes for that month. That way, as you do research on a Saturday or a Sunday, maybe in that process of doing research, you come across some articles that would fit into one of your future themes. Great. All you need to do is, in I think it's in item number five, um, no, item number five, keep a Word document, all right? Open up a Word document, and then put your themes in that Word document, and then if you do run across something, then just copy the URL and put it in that Word document under the theme that you're going to use three weeks from now because you ran across something that you think would really fit well to that theme. That way you don't lose it. It's in your Word document. Uh, as you visit the Facebook pages that you liked to comment on, again, you're gonna come across articles and images that you can use in your weekly themes, or they may stimulate ideas on future themes that you can use that can be developed. And as I've already shared in five, keep this Word document on your computer so that you can log your ideas. You copy and paste the URLs or images and information that's going to help you develop those ideas. And then the final thing before we open this up for questions is the information that I've shared with you today. This strategy can also be used on LinkedIn to create content that brands you to your audience. Everything that you're doing is branding you. Anything that you do negatively is going to brand you. Anything that you do positively is going to brand you. 
But I can tell you, if you brand yourself negatively, it's going to be harder to get rid of that negativity. So just always brand yourself in a positive way. Make sure that the information that you share is done in a positive way that's going to help people. Now, with that said, do I have any questions from anyone with regards to what I've shared with you in today's presentation? Uh, you're muted. You'll have to unmute yourself, and then I can answer any questions. Or if you have a comment, uh, again, please unmute yourself, and let's finish off today's call with whatever comments you have. Don, I've got a comment. Yes, De Timothy. Uh, this is a real winner. And I may not be able to implement all of this, but certainly it is a product that needs investigating and using. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, Timothy. Appreciate your comments. Anyone hey, else? Dan, with... Yes, Judy. Hey, thank you so much. This is so helpful. And um, I know a lot of times when I hear all of, it, of this information, I kind of get into overwhelm. Like, how am I going to do all of this? And, uh, you know, the good thing is you don't have to do it all at once. You just start small with what you can, what you can work with and then build into more. Um, and another thing I'd like to share is there are um, websites that have platforms where you can create all of your posts for the week and schedule them out. So that during that two hours um, over the weekend that you're doing all this work, you can just copy and paste those posts right into that scheduler and you're done. You, you, you schedule the, the day and time of the posts and then they will happen automatically. So you don't have to be on book or LinkedIn or Twitter twice a day. And you can post that same link um, up to three different sites for free. So uh, one of the, the services that I use is called Hootsuite. It's okay. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, Hootsuite. And um, I tell you, it saves hours of trying to spend time in front of the computer. And, you know, if you have an appointment and you want to be, um, do your posts at the same time every day, you know, your morning usually um, is either before work or at lunchtime. And then your evening is your other post in the evening. Um, who knows where you're going to be at those times. And if you're in the middle of something and then you forget. So to be able to post it automatically now you just have to check on the comments, which you have to do anyway. Sure, and you can, and you can check on your comments just on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Dan, great. Great information, again. Judy. Thank you. Yes, Timothy. Uh, that's what I meant, that I, not, I may not be able to do that. But Judy, thanks very much. That is the, that is the missing link in my thinking that how can I do this when I'm so busy during the day? Thanks, Judy, for that backup, and that sort of put a little more edge on me. Thanks. You're welcome, Timothy. Thank you, Judy. Anyone else have anything that they would like to share, comment on, or ask a question about? Uh, Hello, Dan. This is David. Really? Uh, uh, go ahead, David. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I did. I just wanted to tell you that this is great information. Thank you again. Uh, it's it's a structured information, structured of, of what a lot of us are trying to do, including myself. And it's it it just uh, enlightens me to a effective drip campaign. That's really what you're talking about here, and it allows uh, consistent uh, exposure. Uh, Judy, thank you for the hoot suite. I'm going to look into that because that's one of the challenges I get in terms of scheduling. So. Uh, both of you, thank you, and I'll, and I'll definitely look into that. Thank you, David. Yes, uh, drip campaign is absolutely correct. You want to drip relevant, useful information on your audience, and uh, that over time will also help you grow your audience because it is useful information. Thank you. Bob, you were going to say something? Oh, I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, I've got a bunch of info, or I've got a bunch of notes here from the, today's information, so thanks a million. I really appreciate it. It's great. 
You're welcome, Bob. And just so you know, the PDF will be available on Tuesday's newsletter. So if you want to not get writer's cramp, you can always use the PDF. <laughs> I'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Save, save your hand action for cutting wheat. There you go. Anyone else? Thank you, Bob. Anyone else before we say goodbye? Uh, just one last suggestion, if I may. Sure. Is um, I do posts like this on my, my business page. I have a business page. And I do these posts on my business page. And, you know, does it get a lot of action? Absolutely not. It, not yet. It does not. However, um, I'm asking the people that I meet on those other pages to like my business page and not me personally. So it's a, uh, it's a softer sell. And then I share my posts from my business page onto my personal page so that my, my friends on my personal site also get to see it. And now it's coming from a business page and not from me. That's excellent, Judy. And then I do have a question since you're on. What I shared today, does this work on LinkedIn? It absolutely will work on LinkedIn. Absolutely no question about it because LinkedIn has, um, you know, a, um, a, a page too where people are posting all the time. And um, it, it does make a difference. When I post articles on LinkedIn, I always get comments. Always. It never fails. I always get comments. And do you find that the comments that you get on LinkedIn are what I call more professional comments than necessarily what you would get on Facebook from a social standpoint? Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. My, my, my choice of business partners are professionals. So, um, you know, to, to me, that's the people that I want to hang around. Um, you know, I deal with so yesterday I talked to a woman that uh, uh, puts monitoring, home monitoring system into people that um, uh, cannot get to the doctor. And so when I talked to her, it's all about how can we partner? How can we collaborate? What, how can we help each other grow our businesses at the same time? Um, and so when people are commenting on articles, um, they're, they're always... Um, thinking of ways that it's going to either help them personally or help their business. So it's kind of a two for one punch. Good. All right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else before we say goodbye? All right. I want to thank everyone. Next week, we're going to be looking at the new product from Synergy Worldwide called Immune Boost. Uh, we're going to look at the video that Synergy has created for this product. We're going to look at the ingredient list for it. Uh, I might have done by that time my own video on this product. I'm not going to promise that, but it is one of my goals to have ready for next Saturday. Uh, but it will be a great discussion, and the Immune Boost product from Synergy Worldwide is certainly timely and relevant to where we're at in America today. And from a price point standpoint, it is priced much more reasonably than what we thought it was going to be priced. And so it has the potential to be a big seller in Synergy Worldwide. So you definitely want to be on next Saturday. And if you've got people in your organization, your Synergy organization that are not on the Saturday presentation, please invite them, get them here next Saturday. So we can help to, uh, when Synergy officially launches it at the end of the month. That's what the that's what the indication has been. You know, it could be first part of September, but if it's not at the end of the month, then I would think it'll be the first part of September. But we want to be ready so that we can create interest in the product. We can start getting that product into the hands of people. See you next Saturday. Have a blessed weekend. Bye bye.